I'm excited to, to be here with you and share with you some of the things that we've been doing in the Windows world to make Windows a much more attractive platform for developers, um, including Java developers, but also including Node developers and Python developers and, and developers that are, that are targeting apps and platforms and infrastructures that aren't necessarily Windows. We still want Windows to be a great place for you to, to hang out, to write your code, to debug your systems, and to deploy into, into production and to test environments and so on. Um, so I've got a lot to cover. I'm going to try and cover it as best I can. I'm going to take the risk of trying to demo stuff live. Hopefully, the demo gods will be kind to me. Uh, we'll see. Um, but fundamentally, uh, we're, we're here really um, uh, talking about Java specifically. But the fundamental issue that a lot of people have when working on Windows is in setting up a development environment, getting the tools they need, getting everything installed correctly and configured correctly and so on. And then when you're building an application, if you're building an application, as, as we discussed just before the session, um, that needs to be deployed to Linux in the real world afterwards, uh, it's often a bit of a headache if you're in the Windows world because your Windows file system looks very different to a Linux environment. And how do you, if you're a Windows developer, test your code and make sure it's working before you push it up into production and realize that you've got a path wrong, for, for example. Um, so this is where Windows Subsystem for Linux comes in. We'll, we'll, we'll have a quick spin through what WSL is, how it works, and, and how you might use it. And then at the very end of the session, I do have a couple of slides, one with a call to action, and one with a resources slide with links to all of the repos that I mentioned in the session, as well as all of the Twitter handles of the people you might want to re reach out to if you want to discuss some of this stuff further. So don't worry about trying to trying to keep up with, uh, with URLs and things. As we're going through the demos, there'll be a slide for that later. Uh, cool. So let's see how far we can get through this without running out of time. Uh, conscious of time, let's get, let's get zooming. So if you've ever used Windows and tried to set up a development environment, um, you probably noticed that it's uh, a little less optimal, especially if you're coming from the Linux world where you're used to apt installing everything, uh, or from the, from the Mac world where you're used to brew installing everything. In Windows, it's traditionally been a bit more of a hodgepodge process. Um, it usually involves an awful lot of searching the web, looking for how do I install such and such a thing, how do I install Java, how do I install Eclipse, how do I install uh, IDEA, or whatever developer tools you prefer to use. Um, and you sometimes have to search multiple pages, multiple sites, and then you usually end up at somewhere where it says, here's how you do this thing. And you go and read a bunch of manual steps, and then you go and manually download tools from wherever it is they say you should get them from, usually littered all over the place. Um, you then run the installers, you go through the UAC screen, you go through multiple pages of, a, of an installer uh, and, uh, installer tool, which then gets your, your tool onto your machine. Uh, this can require quite, quite a lot of time and effort, uh, a lot of manual processes. It's not something you can kick off generally, walk away, make a cup of coffee, come back, and your machine is ready to go. Um, and it's also difficult to automate. It's difficult to deploy software at, at scale in a, large, uh, in a large team, for example, uh, using manual processes like this. Um, I've been on many a developer team in the past where the first thing you have to do is spend the first couple of days fighting through the partially written, mostly out of date documentation as to how you manually go and set up your configure your machine, um, which is a bit of a shame. And it's something you have to do on a per tool basis. Once you've installed Java, you then have to go and get your ID. You then have to go and get linting tools and debuggers and, and everything else you might want. And if you then need to go and get Node and Python, this can take quite a lot of time. Now, we're very conscious of this, and we're very conscious of, of how the rest of the world um, works, because a lot of us also have Macs and Linux machines littering our, our office spaces, even at home here. Um, <laughs> And we, we believe that the, there's, we can do a better better way, of, that there is a better way of doing this. There's a better way of setting up a developer environment. Um, we think that there's a, a, a way in which we can make it much faster and easier for you to set up an environment to install tools from a variety of sources, but using common processes and common practices, and to make that process easily configurable, customizable, automatable. You can write scripts to do this. And of course, um, this is via the command line. Um, we announced at Build last, uh, last May, uh, the Build conference that happens each May-ish timeframe is the big Microsoft developer conference. And we announced this thing called Winget. And Winget is for those who've used Brew, who used Apt on, on, on Ubuntu or Zipper on, 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 on SUSE, for example. 
Uh, Winget is essentially a command line tool that allows you to install applications. It automates the installation of traditional Windows installer packages and allows you to, to install all of those things from the command line uh, quite easily. So let's spin back here to my virtual machine. And here we have, I'm running this in a VM, so hopefully everything works. Um, here we have Windows, uh, standard Windows 10 build. There's nothing particularly magic here. Um, and we have on the, on the taskbar here uh, a browser and uh, my PowerShell, script, uh, PowerShell shell uh, link and, uh, and the file explorer there. Um, let's fire up PowerShell just for a second. Uh, this is the legacy console. This is the traditional Windows command line user, user interface to your shell of choice. On Windows, by default, we ship CMB and we ship PowerShell. We strongly recommend that you use PowerShell moving forward. Um, and I can uh, use commands to navigate my command line. Uh, if I execute Winget, for example, Winget is now built into and shipped within Windows. It's shipped if you're running, if you're running in, uh, Insider builds in particular, it's included in the Insider builds. If you're not able to run Windows 10 Insider's builds, you are actually able to sign up to be able to, uh, to install uh, Winget itself separately from the rest of the Windows Insider stuff. So if you're on a standard build of Windows 10, you can actually go and install, uh, get onto the, the Winget uh, pre-release vehicle uh, so you can at least test Winget out if, you, if you'd like to. Uh, alternatively, you can actually download the source code, build it yourself, and, uh, and run it that way if you prefer. But as you can see here, the Winget command emits a bunch of text that helps you uh, understand what, what you might be able to do with Winget. Uh, for example, what's, what happens if I, if I want a more advanced, more modern command line environment? Let's see if we can install Windows Terminal, which is the new next generation command line environment that we're building for Windows uh, as we speak. So let's do winget search windows oops, terminal. And that will then go off, search the, uh, the, the configured sources for winget. And we'll come to what that means in just a second. Uh, and it will go and look for an application called Windows Terminal. As you can see here, it's returned four records. Um, we have Windows Terminal that's available from Winget and from the Microsoft Store. Yes, we actually enable the, you to install applications, a, a select set of right now, um, but a select set of applications that don't require payment and so on uh, from the Windows Store. And also from the Winget repo itself, which we'll take a look at in just a second. So in Winget here, I'm going to install Microsoft.Windows Terminal, and I'm going to specify to get it from Winget in this particular case. So I can say Winget install Microsoft Windows Terminal minus S Winget minus source Winget. Now, when I run this, it's going to go and get the installer for Windows Terminal. It's going to download it onto my machine, as you can see with the colorful progress bar here. It's then going to run the installer just as if you had done those steps manually yourself. So where is Winget actually getting this information from? Well, let's take a look over here at the GitHub repo for the Winget packages repo, which is the repo that Winget, Winget is, uh, is initially configured to look at in order to be able to download, uh, find and download applications. Um, let's see, it's taking a few seconds to come up. It's currently busy installing Windows Tunnel in the background here. But I just wanted to briefly show you how simple it is to add your own packages or to request the addition of packages to the Winget repo, should you wish to do so. If, for example, you stumble over, stumble over a tool that you'd like to see included, all you've got to do is come to the repo and create a pull request to add to the manifests folder um, a manifest that describes the application, where it comes from, what its version is, and so on. And we'll very quickly take a look at the Windows Terminal, uh, if we scroll down here, there are currently over a 1,000 packages that have been added since we unveiled this thing in May. Um, I'll actually scroll down using the bar here because there's so many. And if we go to, in this particular case, we just installed Microsoft Windows Terminal. If we look down here, we'll find Microsoft. And inside there, we should find the Windows Terminal. Um, package description, Windows Terminal. 
There's also Windows Terminal Preview if you'd like to live on the, on the cutting edge of things. But as you can see, we've got all the package descriptions for each of the different builds of Windows Terminal so that you can install not just from a specific source, but also a specific build of Windows Terminal. And in this particular case, as you can see, we have the URL to where it's from, the SHA signatures and so on. Every package that's added to the repo is checked against multiple uh, antivirus package scanners and is also manually reviewed by the team before inclusion. Uh, to make sure uh, it's uh, make sure it's it's, it's valid and, and consistent and uh, it's coming from a repeatable source and so on and so on. Um, the team are hard at work in building out this repo with additional packages and also a bunch of uh, enterprise friendly features as well that enable you to uh, to go and uh, 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 create your own repo sources and configure multiple repo sources if you wish. Um, so that you can deploy your tools to your employees and your team members much more easily. So if we quickly launch Windows Terminal now, one second. So this machine is chugging along. So that's the old prompt. Hopefully up here we have Windows Terminal that we've just installed. And if you click on Windows Terminal, you'll see that it's actually quite a bit different to the old legacy console that we've been using so far. It has a bunch of features. It's highly configurable, Windows Terminal. It allows you to have multiple profiles. And a profile is essentially, think of it as a connection to a shell, either a local shell or even a remote shell via SSH and the likes. Um, you can use Windows Terminal to talk to WSL instances, and we'll come to what WSL is shortly as well, for those that haven't seen it. Uh, but you can create multiple tabs, and you can, uh, you can have those tabs running side by side. Uh, you can also connect to multiple different connections, as you can see here, uh, and we'll come back to what those look like in just a second. Um, but obviously, from within here, let's close down the original old legacy console here. We'll put that back to sleep. Um, I could also type, for example, winget search open JDK. What if I wanted to install oops, open JDK? What if I wanted to install an open JDK on Windows? Rather than having to go to search to look for documents to find out how to perform a, a bunch of manual steps, I can instead say, oh, let's go install um, the adopt open JDK. So I can specify the full ID here. Or if I do winget install um, adopt open JDK dot open JDK. Oh, I mistyped it. It's not gonna let me. There you go. Just proof it's real code that, that when you type it in wrong, it doesn't automatically proceed assuming that you're correct. So here is going to go and look up in the package repo for the package details, for the package manifest for adopt open JDK. It's going to find out where it goes and downloads the MSI from. This is just a standard Microsoft installer package. It's going to download that MSI to my machine, and it's then going to run that package uh, using the pre-declared uh, command line arguments so that I don't have to then go and walk through a 15-page installer uh, uh, sequence of installer pages uh, to specify where everything goes and all the options. Um, you can pass in arguments to the MSI installer uh, and declare that as part of the manifest as well if you want to configure your, uh, your machines using a preset set of, uh, of settings and, and options and so on. Um, so that's downloaded and installing now. Uh, it's taking a few seconds, so bear with me. Uh, but fundamentally, this is the same process now for all of these tools. If I want to go install VS Code, if I want to go and, go and install Eclipse, if I want to go and install all your favorite tools, Node and Git and so on and so on, now it's when get install Git, when get install Node.js, when get install all the things that you want to install. And if I, as I said, if there are things that are missing that you'd like to see included in the default repo, then please go ahead, uh, submit a PR. The team are very welcoming of, of new PRs and, uh, and submissions of new packages. Um, we do also encourage you, if you're not a member of the team that creates the thing that you'd like to see in the package repo, also reach out to them and encourage them to automate the, uh, the, the publishing of new versions of their packages 
to the Winget repo uh, by, by incorporating a small script into their CI CD system so that each time they push a new build out into the public release, then it automatically ends up pushing a new update to Winget as well. Um, you'll notice here, uh, as we're going through this installation, it does ask me, we, we can't bypass UAC. Uh, it does ask me to accept the installation of this package just as if I'd downloaded the MSI and double-clicked it myself. Um, but fundamentally, this is exactly the same process. It's just automating the process. There's nothing new here. You don't have to build a whole new packaging format if you don't want to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the net result of this is that once this is complete, I should then, let me close off this other terminal that I double click by accident. I should then have Java installed on this on this VM. Um, that then will allow me to, uh, to execute uh, Java code and to build Java applications on Windows uh, with relatively little effort compared to how I might have done so in the past. Um, so here, for example, is um, some Java code. Uh, we'll come back to this Java code in just a minute. Um, this VM is really struggling. I think my poor machine is uh, struggling to stream video as well as uh, run a VM. I need a, need a bigger machine. I shall have a chat with my boss about that after this session. Um, but this is very, very simple code. Uh, it's just a quick little hello world. I'm not going to teach you guys how to write hello world in Java because I'm pretty sure you're, you're far more expert than I am in these things. Um, but this is standard Java code, which once Java has installed on my machine, I'll be able to run. We'll come back to that and see that in just a minute. I just want to proceed with a couple more slides. OK, cool. So let's come back to the slides for a second. Um, so we've just seen how we can install. We've just installed Windows Terminal, and we've just installed the OpenJDK uh, pretty easily and pretty consistently. I haven't had to go and do a bunch of manual searching and reading of documentation and downloading of random tools from random places. Uh, allowing me to set up my environment much more quickly than if I'd have done this manually using traditional methods. Now, I've mentioned this thing called WSL as well. Um, if you're building Java applications for Windows that you aim to target and deploy on Windows, then clearly it makes sense for you to remain in Windows and build your applications using the Windows toolset, the Windows SDKs and JDKs and, and IDEs and so on. Um, however, if you're planning on building something that you're later going to deploy to a Linux environment, then wouldn't it be great if you could run that Linux workload in a Linux environment on your Windows machine without having to dual boot and without having to have the explicit boundary of a, of a hard VM boundary and run a, a VM on your machine and then switch back and forth between these environments? Wouldn't it be great if you could actually run these things side by side simultaneously? So. Um, one of the things that we released back in 2016, I actually came back to Microsoft after a six-year sabbatical in the real world. Uh, I came back to Microsoft to work on the new Windows subsystem for Linux and to help overhaul and create the Windows terminal as well. Uh, I could not have been more excited to do so because this really does change everything. If you're building applications that target Linux, you really need a Linux environment to work in. And until this came along, until WSL came along, your only option on Windows was either to dual boot or to run a VM, which are typically uh, and traditionally fairly resource uh, hungry. Um, but Windows Subsystem for Linux is a mechanism that we built into Windows. Uh, WSL v1 was originally an attempt to essentially duplicate the syscall layer of Linux so that Linux binaries, unmodified binaries, can run on top of Windows. Um, and WSL2 that we announced last month, last May is a new version of WSL that uses a very lightweight VM but, but uh, has really strong integration systems between Windows and the Linux uh, machines that you run in that VM. Uh, and you can run multiple Linux distros on top of these things at the same time as well so that you can run a real Linux environment alongside your, your Windows environment. Now, Enabling WSL in the past has been a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, an effort because you have to go and uh, find a particular dialog box, click this this button, which then enabled WSL, and you then had to reboot and so on. Um, it was it involved several manual steps, uh, which we decided to replace with the simple command of WSL minus minus install. And we just announced this morning that when you use WSL minus minus install, we will also put Ubuntu on your machine to give you a starting point of at least having one distro on your machine so that you don't then have to go to the Windows Store and find a distro and download it before you can actually get running. 
So WSL minus minus install is currently available in Windows 10 Insider builds. And once you run it, you will need to do a reboot if you don't have Hyper-V installed already, because it does need to en enable the hypervisor platform. But fundamentally, you just run WSL install, quick reboot, and then from then on in, you're able to run Linux environments alongside your Windows environments very quickly and effectively. So this takes a process that used to take some people 10, 15 minutes to figure out how to do, and it's turned it into a, a three-second operation plus a quick reboot um, and so on. So WSL, as I mentioned, allows you to run unmodified Linux binaries on Windows and allows you to interop between Windows and between Linux fairly smoothly. As you can see here in the screenshot, we've added a Linux uh, logo icon to the file explorer so that you can see a list of the distros that you have installed on your machine. And you can then click on the distro and navigate its file system from Windows. You can even inv invoke uh, Linux applications from Windows if you wish, and you can go both ways. So from within WSL, you can see your Windows file system and you can invoke Windows applications. From Windows, you can see your Linux file system and invoke Linux applications. Let's take a very quick look at that. Um, oh, let me switch back over here. And so as we, as we saw, we now have the adopt OpenJDK is installed. Just to prove that, I will go to the folder that we saw earlier in File Explorer. Here's my, uh, my Java code, and I shall type Java, hello.java. And when it executes, we'll see hello world uh, quite quick. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I have to restart this terminal, of course, because it's, the path has been modified and the terminal started before the path is modified. So let's reopen terminal. Boom, boom, boom. This poor machine is chugging. I definitely need a better, better machine. OK. So if I type Java minus version, we should see that Java is installed. Hooray! And we go back to dev, hello, and we type java, hello.java, and we see hello world being emitted in just a second when the machine catches up. Let's close this. There we go. Hello world. Fantastic. Uh, on a normal machine, this would happen <laughs> much more quickly, but there we are. Um, one of the things I mentioned as well very briefly when we first installed Terminal was Terminal supports multiple, um, multiple profiles. Here you can see we have the traditional command prompt. We have Windows PowerShell, which is the version of PowerShell traditionally built into Windows, and also PowerShell 7, uh, which is previously known as PowerShell Core, that is also available on Linux and Mac as well, uh, which we're actually using here. Uh, so you should be able to uh, access that as well. Um, and so once, we, once you install WSL, we should also be able to see um, we should also be able to see the Ubuntu shell pop up here as well. For some reason, that's not showing up. So let's very quickly see why. Oh, this machine is really chugging. Um, what I will do instead, actually, because this is struggling and we're running out of time, I will very quickly open up Ubuntu and open up PowerShell side by side on the same machine. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, from Windows, we can see the Linux file system. And from Linux, we can see the Windows file system. Here, for example, is my file explorer looking into my Linux distros. It sees my Ubuntu. Uh, 2004 install here, which is running in WSL. And here we can see the Linux file system. If I go to home, you'll see my username within the Linux environment, uh, and that will be rich. And underneath there is my home folder with any files that I happen to have created, as we can see. Great. So um, I can, for example, also, um, let's do this. Let's do WSL. If I type WSL, I can see all of the commands that are available to me. 
So WSL emits all of the command line arguments, if you don't specify any, uh, that allow you to control, to shut down, to start up, and to mount drives and all kinds of things. I can also say, oh, let's do this. Oh, oh this is so slow. Bruno, if you're watching, I, I, I definitely need you to back me up when I ask for a new machine. Um, the Fortune tool is a command line tool that emits a, a message of the day um, on Linux. It's not available on Windows, so this is actually going to run Fortune in WSL, and it's going to pipe the out of, output of Fortune into Kause, because that's kind of fun. And we're also going to pipe that through lolcat, which is a command line tool. Ah which colors the output of the, uh, of, the, of the text being passed into it. So this essentially is passing these commands from Windows into Linux, into WSL, and it will come back in just a second with a Fortune message um, that, uh, that is colored and um, it's actually been rendered by Linux and streamed back into Windows. Uh, and similarly here, I can, for example, in WSL, open up notepad.exe, proving that WSL is able to spawn a request for a Windows executable to be executed from WSL, which is cool. Um, and I can also, if I look at my WSL distro here, here I am in Ubuntu. You can tell by the orange logo. Uh, if I look at the MNT folder on WSL, I have a C folder. If I look at Mount Wax C, here is my Windows file system, his program files, his users, and Windows, and so on. And so if I have files that live in Windows, I can access them from WSL. If I have files in WSL, I can access them from Windows. I can switch back and forth. And importantly, tools like, for example, VS Code have been built specifically to handle environments just like this, where I can run my UI in uh, Windows, the UI portion of VS Code in Windows, and it talks to a backend engine that can run wherever it needs to run. Normally, when you're running VS Code on Windows, it's running the UI and the engine in Windows itself. But using WSL, the WSL remote um, extensions for VS Code, it can run the UI in Windows that talks to an instance of the VS Code engine executing within WSL, uh, allowing you to debug using GDB, uh, and, and have a pretty seamless experience. It feels just like you're, you're coding it on, on Linux against Linux itself, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so uh, we have just seen um, very slowly, admittedly, so apologies for the state of my machine. Um, but we've seen that we can execute code in Windows that, sorry, we execute commands in Windows that actually invoke inside WSL and from WSL invoking Windows binaries. We've seen that we can reach back and forth between the file systems. Um, and we also announced in May that we're, we're working on two cool new features for WSL moving forward. One of which is the ability to run Linux GUI apps in WSL, but have them project into Windows. Kind of like the, uh, the the way that Parallels allows you to uh, to display Windows applications on your Mac alongside your Mac apps. We're doing a similar thing in Windows where you'll be able to run GIMP or IDEA or Eclipse or whatever running in WSL but drawing on Windows essentially, uh, which is really, really cool stuff. That's about to start hitting previews very soon. Uh, Windows 10 Insider preview builds. And obviously, we're aiming to ship it in the next version of Windows next year. Um, and we're also working on exposing your GPUs to uh, the GPUs on your machine to your WSL instances as well. So if you're running TensorFlow workloads, for example, you'll be able to run those in WSL being a GPU accelerated uh, 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 within the WSL environment as well. Uh, in fact, we'd actually go one step further and we're actually exposing your GPUs via direct compute, uh, sorry, uh, uh, using direct ML which is a, an aspect or a pulp, uh, part of the uh, DirectX platform. And it essentially abstracts the GPU from, from device specifics. This actually allows you to run TensorFlow 
uh, workloads on Intel and AMD and NVIDIA, of course, chipsets, uh, making uh, WSL quite a powerful platform to you, for you to employ on your, uh, on your various hardware, platform, uh, hardware devices. So uh, we're pretty much up to time. Uh, thank you for sticking with me. Sorry for how slow some of these have been, these demos have been. I'm definitely going to go and get a new machine now. Um, <laughs> but uh, we do encourage you to please try Winget. Let us know if there are things missing that you would like to see. If you can submit a PR, that's even better. We'd love to hear from you. And we'd also love to hear from you if you, if you try out Windows Terminal and WSL and PowerShell and PowerShell and VS Code and Power Toys and many of the other great tools that we're building specifically to make Windows more useful, more productive, and more fun to use for developers. Here's a bunch of resources of repos you might want to go and explore. And if you'd like to keep up with the latest and greatest in this area, in the command line area in particular, anything to do with the command line from Winget through WSR and Terminal, um, then please subscribe to our blog and, and visit our blog on a regular basis. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like to bounce off us, uh, there's a bunch of us here. Uh, you, can, you can see all of our Twitter handles here uh, that we'd encourage you to reach out to us on Twitter. A bunch of us hang out way too much there all day long. And we can't wait to hear from you and help answer questions and help steer you onto a good path, or hopefully identify areas where we might need to improve things. Um, with that, oh, let me leave that one up. Um, back to you, Bruno. Sorry for taking. Yeah, time. 